transverse and azimuth angles. A lot of students don't like these. I'm going to tell you ahead of time, they don't like them because they're hard for them to imagine what's going on. But hopefully you will be able to pick it up pretty simply. So let's draw out our 3D system to get started. We got X, we got Y, we got Z like we always have. Now we're going to label this force. Let's just say our force looks like this. This is going to be another way of finding a force vector in the components, by the way. We've got that. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to draw out our little dash lines like we've been doing. So this will indicate that we have all three components. And let's put a dash line here and then one more right there. Okay. That's what we've got. We've got this force vector. It's going to have all three components. And in this case, what we're going to be given, we're going to be given these two angles. We're given this angle right here. Let's call that phi. Right, so the angle between this positive z-axis and the force will be phi. And the angle between x and this dashed line here in the middle, let's call it theta. So that's what we're given, given those two angles. Now phi is the azimuth angle. So we have that, and then theta is the transverse angle. Now we're given these two angles, we need to find the components. So let's go over how we do that. First thing we want to do is we're going to find F prime. And you might be wondering, what is F prime? Because I didn't put it on the drawing yet. F prime, what that is, that's going to be the value of the force along this line right here in the center, which happens to be the same as this one up here. Okay, so these two are the same. We're just going to call them F prime. Now, if you look at this picture, Notice F prime is opposite this angle phi. So with that, we could say that F prime is equal to F sine phi, right? Just doing the same thing we've been doing this whole time. So it's just finding that opposite component. Magnitude would be the magnitude of F. We do the opposite, so we have sine of the angle phi. So that's going to be the value of the force along here and here. Same thing. Now we're going to use this F prime to get our X and Y components. And how are we going to do that, you say? Well, if this is F prime and we know this angle theta right here, we can find X and Y. Right, because this, right here where I have these dashed lines, that is on the xy plane. So fx is going to be the f prime. And we want this length right here. So that's cosine theta. Now if we plug in what f prime is, we're going to get f sine phi cosine theta. Okay, that's how you'll use F prime to get the X component. Now FY, you're going to do the same thing. So FY, that's this component over here. Notice that's the same as this dashed line. That's opposite of that angle. So here we're going to have F prime sine theta. We already know what F prime is. Just plug it in. So F sine phi sine theta is your y component. Now finally, we got to get the z component. And the z component is kind of on its own. You don't need the f prime for this one. The z component would be right here. Actually, let's draw that out. So this would be the z component right here. That's fz. And 
just so you have it, this is Fy. And that right there is Fx. Okay. So Fz, if you look, we've got this angle, phi, and then we've got this force here. So with that, Fz, since it's adjacent to that angle, would just be F cosine phi. Now that's how you go about using the azimuth and transverse angles to get your force components. And a lot of students have a hard time with that. And the main thing is this plane down here. We can usually get this Z component because that's not too different from what we've been doing, but it's this XY plane that tends to be the hardest to see. So let's do another set where we have different angles, just to give you another perspective here. So for this one, let's draw out the 3D system. It looks like that. And let's go ahead and draw the force. And let's put our dashed lines. So it's like that, and I think it's easier to put this dashed line in the middle. Remember this is like F prime, and then we also have a dashed line here, that's F prime also. Now for this one, let's see, let's say we have this angle right here. So this is from the force, this is the force here by the way. We've got the force and it's going down to this dashed line right here in the middle. Let's say this one is phi this time, and now we're given the angle from the y-axis to this F prime line. And that, out of room here, is going to be theta. Let's use those angles this time. And let's see if you can figure it out. So now the first thing you want to do is find F prime, because I think that's the easiest thing. So F prime, what's F prime going to be? Remember, F prime is along this line right here. Notice we've got phi. We've got this force vector. We're just going to take the magnitude of this vector, do cosine of phi, because this is adjacent to that angle. So we'll have F cosine phi for F prime. And then for Fx, let's draw Fx on here. This is Fx right here, right? Fy is going to come out here. Fz goes up like that. Now, back to Fx. Fx is over here. Now, I have this angle for the xy plane. I have this angle theta. That relates my f prime to the xy axis. So if I have this angle, I'm on Fx. Notice Fx is the same as this right over here. This is opposite theta. So we're going to say we have F prime sine theta. Okay. Because now this F prime is kind of like my force vector we're using. So now we've got this F prime sine theta. We already know what f prime is, so you can plug that in. So we have f cosine phi sine theta. For f y, you're going to do the same thought process. We've got this magnitude f prime, and now is it going to be sine or cosine? Remember, this is f y. That's adjacent to this angle, so we're going to have f prime cosine theta. So now plug in F prime, you got F cosine phi cosine mm -hmm. theta. What about Fz? What do we think that would be? Remember, this is Fz. That is the same as this dashed line, right? It's just written in different places. They're parallel to each other, they're the same. This is opposite that phi angle. So you're going to have F sine phi. Now you've got your three components, and you can write out your force vector. So you're going to have F 
cosine phi sine theta i plus f cosine phi cosine theta j plus f sine phi k. And those would be newtons or whatever the unit would be for the force. All right. So you just have to kind of look at the angles you're given and then try to relate it to the xy axis or coordinate system. That tends to be the hardest part. Once you get past this part, you'll be good to go. Okay. So you need to notice that the components change based on what you're given. So there is no set formula that you can use because it's not going to always be the same because you're going to be given different angles. All right. Oh, went too far here. Okay, so let's let's look at it one more different way. And again, the reason I'm spending so much time on this is because people do have problem understanding this at first. Well, let's look at it a different way. Well, let's say we're looking to get F prime. And the way we're going to look at it now, we're going to look at it all in like a 2D sense. So let's draw a little 2D system here. This is going to be our Z axis. This we'll call XY prime. Now think about this as being that the dash line we had I remember we had this and we had this dash line. This dash line, think about that as being this. So let's just call it xy prime. So let's look at it in that sense. Now if I've got f here and I'm given this phi, this is going to be my f prime. So f prime, which now it's easy to see because this is 2D, right? So f prime, if this is f prime on this side, it's going to be f cosine phi. So we have that. Now we're going to get the x and y components. All right, so now just draw it 2D again. Let's make that x, that y. Now in the middle, so again, this is x here, this is y, so we're just drawing that one plane. That's all we're doing. You could rotate a little bit if it make it easier for you. Um, but we're just drawing this xy plane. We've got this in the middle here. That is f prime. We know that that's f cosine phi. Now we've got this angle theta. And we've got fx and fy. So now fx, which is going to be here, fy is over here. So fx is then going to be f prime sine theta, right? Because this, again, is the same as this, just in a different place. This is opposite that angle. So it's got to be sine. Plug in f prime, you got f cosine phi sine theta. Now for Fy, you do the same type of thinking. Fy is this component that's adjacent to that angle. We're going to have F prime cosine theta. So that'll give us F cosine phi cosine theta. All right. So this gives us the exact same thing that we had before. And then from this one over here, you can get Fz. So Fz is just going to be F sine phi. Okay. So same exact thing. So maybe it'll be easier if you look at it from a 2D sense. But once you do these enough times, you'll just be able to look at the picture and go. Okay. Just initially, it takes people a while to figure it out. But just take some time looking at it and then eventually it'll make sense. 
Now, one last thing for this video, the resultant force. We're just going to sum all of the like components, the same way we've been doing with the other method we talked about. So, whoops, don't want to sum there. We're going to have our resultant force. It's going to equal the sum of the x components, i, plus the sum of the y components, j, plus the sum of the z components, k. And remember what that gives you. The resultant force is just the total force acting on your system. And this tells you how much of that force is in the x direction, how much is in the y direction, how much is in the z direction. Let's put a note about that. So it's just a good indication of the forces that you've got acting on your system. Okay, so we're going to stop it there. It's already at 16 minutes for this video, so that's long enough. And we'll pick it up next time with an example.